Welcome to Side Notes. I'm here at the Real World Film Festival once again, out in a boat. We're talking with a filmmaker, Dr. Mo. Thank you so much for your time, first of all. Yeah, thank you guys for the opportunity. And you're involved with not only doing music videos, you're doing other films and everything. Most important is you're, you had a music video that was here at the Real World Film Festival showing talk a little bit about that yeah we had a music video showing uh, uh, yesterday the fourth on the real film festival music video nights it was for the artist big Passity, uh, from Albania uh, we had that music video playing call everybody looks and the concept of the music video was actually nice fun sci-fi concept about um, aliens out of the space. They heard Big Battery music and uh, his songs and they really wanted to have him. So they came out of the orbit to kidnap or take up Big Battery and take him to the space to have a big jam with him. So it was a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of uh, CGI and uh, I think we did a good job on that. And can people actually go see that online somewhere? Yes, you could see it online, you could see it on YouTube. Definitely, you could type uh, "Everybody Looks" by Big Pasty. You could also see it at uh, Dream Factory Studios. Uh, yep, uh, it's available there. Uh, and it was playing uh, all over uh, the globe uh, last year um, in uh, Much Music and MTV. So you could be able to get it online for sure. And you're involved with the uh, web series at the same time. You want to share a little bit about that too? Yes, uh, we're involved in this web series. We're in production now. We have our first trailer out. Uh, you can check it out at Jack Jack and Zoe uh, Jack J S E K Zoe Z O E dot C A. And it's a nice little fun. It's uh, it's uh, about um, a high school um, teacher that got blackmailed by his students. So I don't want to. We spoil a lot of the of the goodies of the web series, but you guys could go over jackandzoe.ca and you could see a lot of the what the whole series about. Are there any other projects you've been involved with that really stand out in your mind at this time? Uh, yes, uh, I'm actually working in a pre-production for uh, my feature film. Uh, this something should come up soon, and also my previous uh, documentary that I have done about the current genocide in Darfur. So Darfur, the truth, uh, it's been viewed at Al Jazeera Network and Al Hora TV. So that would be most uh, one of the things will stand out that I've done in the past uh, recent year. And that uh, done for uh, video that you've done. What is one thing, message that you want to get out in reference to that documentary to the world that they want? To, they should be taken from that. I would like to take the. I would like to bring the voice of the victims and the people involved in this genocide and teach the world and let them know those things are still going on. We said about since the Holocaust, never again, but it happens in Rwanda and now it's happening again in Darfur. So the whole world should stand up and stand against this because this is, shouldn't happen again and it shouldn't happen in this day and age. And what is your website so people, if they have some questions, they want to ask you, they could fire an email off to you? Yes, you could go at jackandzoe.ca and you will find me there and uh, you could email me all your um, comments and everything else. Is there any um, message you want to leave with people uh, listening to this video right now? Yeah, I just would like to say for the all filmmaker all out there, guys, get up and do your things and try to join all film festival around the world, especially Real World Film Festival. And I definitely would like to uh, thank you for this opportunity. And uh, guys, go watch this video. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thanks. I'm here with the director, writer of the Rail Path Hero, Lori Townsend. Lori, great movie, first of all, I have to say that. Thank you so much for letting us go and watch it. Thank you. Thank you for being part of the audience tonight. And what I want you to do is quickly give a brief synopsis of the film. Sure. Uh, the story of the Rail Path Hero is about a young up-and-coming hockey player named Damon who is uh, a week away from the tryout of his life. And the only problem is he's got a pair of skates that are busted, uh, being held together literally by a worn pair of crimson laces. Um, as luck would have it, uh, a coach gifts him a pair of brand new skates just in time for the tryout, but that gift comes with the unthinkable price tag uh, when the coach turns and sexually abuses Damon. Um, when it's time to lace up, Damon is stuck with an impossible choice, the choice between his dignity and his dream. Uh, but like 
the heroes who I've researched, who uh, survive, who are survivors of childhood sexual abuse, he, he comes up with a solution that is the best he can do with what he has. And therein lies the story of hope and resilience. Well, it, it's so important that the subject that you've actually tackled here. What has Sheldon Kennedy shared with you over your film? Well, he actually did have a chance to, it was screened for him online uh, through, via a mutual contact, uh, his Toronto uh, person here. Uh, he, Sheldon Kennedy has a company called Respect Group Inc. They do um, anti-bullying, uh, abuse prevention programming, and uh, so it was his contact here in Toronto, who I was dealing with directly, who said that Sheldon watched the film and said that it closely, uh, it closely reflected his experiences. Um, and that was, that was heartwarming to know that we, we did his story justice and um, I would love at some point to be able to be face to face with Sheldon and, and talk more about how the film affected him. And I was talking to your producer before she was sharing with me that after the Real World Film Fest was over, uh, the possibility you're going to start showing the film schools and elsewhere? Yes, that would be the ultimate goal, to get the film out to schools and sports organizations and anyone who's really on the front lines working with students, um, as well as you know, screening the film in front of audiences, um, particularly audiences of color, where um, the issue of sexual abuse and the, the, the cycle of shame and silence is prevalent. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those, it's, it's a film that I want to use as a tool, a tool for discussion and a tool for healing. And this story itself is loosely based on your brother. Can you share a little bit about that? I know we're going to get him to share a couple words right after you. Yeah, well, my brother Graham Townsend uh, grew up just like Damon, um, you know, dreams of playing in the NHL. And um, he was really prepared to, to do everything he could to, to achieve his dream. Um, unlike Damon, and, and thankfully, my brother was not uh, the subject of sexual abuse, but uh, there were certainly times of, of different forms of abuse um, at the hands of coaches, the various uh, coaches. And that dynamic between um, a powerful coach and, and a child who really, really wants something is uh, what I wanted to explore in this. And so, you know, the, the story is not um, biographical in that sense, but, um, you know, Damon ends up being a composite of my brother and a lot of the students that I come across in my classroom as well. And quickly, what is the website for your, your film? Uh, you can find information about The Rail Path Hero at therailpathhero.wordpress.com and um, also on Facebook. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'm here with Graham Thompson. Graham, uh, I was just talking to your sister, Lori. She did The Rail Path Hero uh, here at the Real World Film Festival. The film was loosely based upon what you went through. I know you made it to the show in the NHL. Can you talk about some of the things you went through in hockey? Well, you know, with, like anything in life, you, you meet with challenges and uh, the, the people who doubt you, sometimes you doubt yourself. And so I would say that for me, the, um, the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest obstacle was really just kind of believing in myself and, uh, and, and believing what others were saying about me in terms of their support for my, for my abilities or whatever I had. And I think that, that was really the big obstacle, was just, just really believing in your dream and and going for something that you just think is bigger than yourself. And the first time you stepped on ice on an NHL rink, what did it feel like? When there were about 17, 18,000 screaming fans? Uh, honestly, it, it actually felt like I was dreaming. I really had to remind myself that I was in the middle of a hockey game. I, 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 I it felt like I was dreaming. I remember biting my tongue to make sure I, was, I wasn't dreaming and thought if I was, I'd wake myself up. But yeah, it felt, it was surreal, as they say, and um, it, it just felt like you weren't even there, really. It was, it was an amazing experience. And how many goals did you score? <laughs> I, I was fortunate enough to score three goals throughout my NHL playing career. I scored a lot more at the minor league level, but um, well, yeah, I got three goals in the NHL. So the first NHL goal ever, what was going through your mind when that puck crossed the blue line, the goal line? I was surprised. I was relieved because it had been several games before I got my first goal, and um, I was starting to wonder if it was ever going to happen. So I was really relieved and thrilled, but at the same time, it was uh, we were losing the game, so I couldn't get too excited. What kind of advice would you give youth that were in hockey right now that they're dreaming themselves of getting to the NHL? I think you have to believe you can do it. I think you have to, you know, have faith and and truly believe that you can that you can that you can succeed. It's not a it's a marathon, not a sprint, and it takes time to develop the skills necessary to get there. And so you just have to believe in yourself. And if you're fortunate enough to have a family like I had who believed in who believe in you as well, that makes it that much 
more manageable and that much more attainable. Is there a website that anyone can actually fire an email off to you, maybe even through your sister, if that's possible? Oh, if people want to email me directly, they can email my, uh, my personal email is townsendhockey at yahoo.com. It's uh, T-O-W-N-S-H-E-N-D, hockey at yahoo.com. Are there any final words you wish to share? I'm sorry? Any final words that you want to share? Just, I'm really proud of my sister. I think she did a phenomenal job with this, uh, with this film, and I'm just uh, looking for more and more from her in the future. She's very talented, and I'm very proud of her. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'm here with Phil and Alex from My Heritage here at the Real World Film Festival short film. Thank you so much, both of you gentlemen, for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. Oh, in My Heritage, I was laughing when I saw the gentleman dressed up in that attire with a red face. Whose idea was it? Uh, Phil is the writer of the film, so a lot of the great ideas that you saw on screen were straight from his brain, down on a page, recreated on screen. So he's uh, he's the man to credit. Uh, it was uh, I saw a lot of Chinese opera growing up as a kid, and it always looked to me it's kind of like Kabuki theater. It looked really ridiculous. So I thought, why not? Uh, paint a white man in kabuki or Chinese opera outfit and I just thought that's absurd and it would look really funny on screen mm -hmm. and it fits the narrative of the film so that's yep. uh, exactly why we did it and I was worried whether it would be offensive so I ran it by the racist expert <laughs> Alex and uh, it passed this test. It, it did pass my test. <laughs> <laughs> well even with the you know when his uh, ex-wife opened the curtain and all of a sudden she saw him standing out there and he really wasn't he was just dancing around and just the reaction you got off of her just to me that said it all and just laughing it was hilarious I, I think it was it was to us we again visually it was so funny uh, it was Alex's idea but we decided to take him out for a walk <laughs> with the costume on the scene itself was very short it was I think it was like you know a few seconds but we spent all this money renting the outfit and we spent all this time putting the makeup on. We go, okay, we're gonna shoot some extras. We wanted to stretch it out and make as much as we could out of it. So if you watch the film, you'll see that when the ending credits roll, there's just a sequence of him actually in a neighborhood walking around greeting uh, pedestrians on the street while he's in full, the full garb. Yeah, he's just waving at strangers. Uh, and strangers are like awkwardly don't know what to do with this red man approaching them. <laughs> so we thought that was pretty funny, yeah. Well, one uh, underlining, um, basically, theme of the film that I saw, short story, excuse me, is I loved is the fact that you had a Chinese elder gentleman who adopted this Caucasian baby and allowed him into his culture. To me, that says Canada, because Canada is a, a, a mix max of different people from all over the world coming together into one nation. I, I'd like each of you to comment on if you would. Sure. Um I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think even if you just look at the poster that uh, when Phil and I were thinking about just the poster, we took the picture of Tony and Mike Fleury, who are the two lead characters, and just taking that photo of them together in the attire and then placing them you know, on the CN Tower skyline, that alone, I think we were trying to depict the uh, multiculturalism in Toronto and in Canada. So I, I, I think you hit it right on the head when you say that uh, it depicts what Canada is in terms of a multi multicultural uh, diverse community for sure. I think Toronto is the perfect setting to do this mm -hmm. uh, because it is multicultural and also because as multicultural as we think it is uh, still the majority of the population don't uh, understand the lives of what's happening in other people's cultures mm -hmm. and so what, during the screening today which I thought the reaction was wonderful yeah um, it was it was I think the laughter was the catharsis of understanding what the other culture felt like it's like oh so this is what uh, a white guy who was raised uh, by an Asian father would would feel like, uh, and uh, to me that was that was that was exactly why I think it should be it was done in Toronto. We really liked the honest response to that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what are some upcoming projects that you guys are involved with? Maybe on the internet that people could see somewhere. Uh, we actually just shot a short film. It was a one minute short. It's called um, The Lonely Monster. That's actually up on YouTube right now, so you could check that out. If you type in Lonely Monster. Real, the real challenge. If you type that in on YouTube, you'll be able to see our one-minute short. Uh, I'll, it was we, it was myself and Phil and Jerome Skeet, who was uh, the co-director of the film with Phil, and we did that. And we're currently working on something else that Phil can give you a little bit more detail. Yeah, so we're we're doing a short called Burnout. Uh, it's a 30-minute short film. 
<coughs> and we're still looking at funding for that. So if anybody's interested, it'd be great um, mm -hmm. uh, just to give us a shout, and we could let you know what the project is about. Uh, yeah. But it's pretty much uh, about a gentleman named. It's it's kind of like her meets Twilight Zone, uh, meets Children of Men, meets Apollo thirteen, meets Apollo thirteen, <laughs> uh, and it's about a gentleman named Neil, and he's very disenfranchised with his life. Uh, and he works for a company called Credit Card for Kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and all he does is he proves credit for children. And uh, one day, one of his colleagues passes away. His name is Phil. And um, sees him in the cast it, and he gives a eulogy, and there's nobody in the audience. There's like three people. So he thinks to himself, I've got to make something of myself. I've got to go do something with my life. I've got to leave a legacy. I can't be like this guy who just died. So anyways, he goes, uh, <clears throat> he applies for this program that, goes, that would allow him to go to outer space. A one-way trip to, to Mars, basically, to colonize Earth and to be like, you know, the man that would leave a legacy for mm -hmm. all of mankind. Um, and so uh, he does actually get the phone call, and um, you know they say congratulations, you've been accepted. Uh, <clears throat> and he's very happy at this, but he has to go home and tell his pregnant wife that he's going to leave her forever. So that's the premise of that's our. The premise of it. It's also based on. Um, if you have a chance, you should Google Mars One. It's a very interesting uh, website where they're now starting to get ready to send the first group of people to Mars. Uh, so kind of based on that, that thought of that actually coming to fruition and that happening in the near future is kind of what sparked this, I think. Yeah, we uh, really liked the idea because we thought who would be crazy enough to abandon their wife and kids. And But there are people that apply there, to this program. Because if you think about it, those people will be you know, left in history. Like They'll be remembered as the first people on Mars. So... Uh, it just comes down to what do you value? Do you want your name to last in history? Do you want to take care of your family? And that's a, it's an interesting thing to think about. Yeah. The ego. Yeah. And do you guys have a website that people could actually go to? And they might want to send you guys an email, ask you a, a question? Sure. You can reach me uh, via email at contact at alexnarvaz.com. Um, or you can check out alexnarvaz.com. It's under construction at the moment, but it will be up soon. Hey, Alex, how long has it been under construction for? I actually just started this website, Phil. So oh, it's you been have? yeah, oh, you have? yeah, okay. yeah. So it's been under construction for about two three weeks, <laughs> three weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah, either Alex's website or I don't know my website. My plug is philleung.com. Do you have any final words you wish to share? Um, yeah, I hope for anyone who's part of Real World, thank you for including us in your uh, film festival. It was an honor to be picked up, and I hope you enjoyed the film. And um, I hope that. You enjoy what me and Phil continue to put out towards uh, the festivals. Just check out My Heritage. Type in My Heritage, please. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you both. Thank All you. Right, great. Cheers. Cool.